we are back for another exciting story. This one is called The Wonderful Brocade, a legend from China. We're going to find out what a brocade is. This is specifically for INDLS first grade students, but for anyone that wants to enjoy a great story. Okay, so this story is for 8.5 and 8.5. 8.6 in our OLS literature and comprehension. So that would be on week 12, day two and day three. Okay, and the story before we were finishing up the water of life. This story you can find in the K-12 Classics for Young Readers, volume A, and it is on page 148. What's nice is, guess what? When you get your book, it's also in the contents. All right, and I like that because sometimes I don't know what page it's going to be on. So, you know the drill. In a second, you're going to pause the video. You're going to go get the book and come back while we do a great picture walk. And then I'm going to read the story. Now, it's a long story. So, remember, if you need to, you can always pause the video. Get those fishy cheeks moving so they don't fall asleep on you. And get a drink of water, use El Baño, the bathroom, um, and then come back and unpause it and listen to the rest of this story. All right? So, my wonderful friends, go get this book and Hajime. Hey, hi, you're back. Gosh, I love it when you show up. You always surprise me. All right, so. In this book, we're going to turn to page 148, 148, and your learning coach can totally help you out there so that we can find it, all right? The Wonderful Brocade, and this, this, my friends, is a legend from China, and if we Look at my, my big, awesome globe. Remember, here we are in Indiana in the United States of America. And if we go all the way over, remember, there was France and there's Spain. And we've looked at some other countries and there's Italy. And if we keep going, keep going, we get to this big country right here called China. Yeah, yeah. And they speak the language Chinese. Guess what? You ready to learn how to say hello in Chinese? Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Now you know how to speak some Chinese and say hello. Ni hao. So this is in a big country called China. All right. So here we go. We're going to do a picture walk. You know how this goes. On the first page, wow, I see woman now she looks like she might be older and i can tell because she has wrinkles and gray or white in her hair that doesn't mean that she's older but i am going to infer that she's older and she looks like she's she's making something on a loom maybe a tapestry and i see beautiful animals i know you can see them too oh i see a tiger i see a dragon what other animals do you see in there do you see flowers and trees oh i see the birds wow what beautiful colors. Okay, turn the page. Oh, now I see her at the bottom of the page and that might be her village. Look at the homes. Don't they look different from what we have here in Indiana? And she's talking to someone and she has something in her arm. Now on page 151, I see the woman again and it looks like a picture, but I see two gentlemen. They're not smiling. I wonder why. Turn the page. I see somebody that looks very shocked. Hmm, and looks like there's sticks or something in his pack or her pack. Turn the page. Oh no, page 153. Look at the woman. How can you tell she is sad? That's right. Do you see she has tears and still looks like she's working on her whatever a tapestry? Do you think that's what a brocade is? Ooh. Oh, I hope we find out. Now look at the bottom. I can't tell, but it looks like something red is going into the flower. I, I don't know if it's thread or... Do you think she hurt herself? 
Turn to page 154. Now I see, I think we saw those men before, and she's she's showing maybe another picture, but it almost looks like a blanket, and one is really smiling. I don't know about the other two. If you look on page 155, I can't really tell what's going on. It, it kind of looks like the picture that she's holding up with a blanket on page 154, but it looks like a big, big countryside with with a home and trees and, and mountains and water. Oh, what a beautiful picture. Page 156. Oh, I see a home, but it looks to be there's somebody laying on the ground. Can you see very small up the steps? Hmm. Page 157. It looks, I see a horse, maybe. I see a tree and a home. And I see what looks to be an older gentleman with the big long beard and a younger person talking to him. I have no idea what's going on. I can't wait to read this story. Turn the page. There's another person and he looks surprised. He has a box giving to him and then at the bottom I see somebody walking away. I hope these pictures make sense once we start reading. Remember how they did when we read um, The Water of Life? Oh, The Water of Life where they get the cup of water to save the dad and marry the princess. You remember that. Hey, on page 160, 160, it looks like the two gentlemen are there. I see the horse. And they're standing up. Maybe they're talking. Oh, I love these pictures. Page 162. Oh, I see the horse again. <gasps> Look at page 163. Looks like a, a horse with a person on there and there's fire everywhere. I'm so excited to read this just to see if everybody's okay. Page 164 and 165. I wonder if that is the horse and rider from the last page. Looks to be maybe a flood. Look at all the water and there's a home. Look at those waves, the blue and the white. Turn the page. 166. Oh, I see what looks to be a woman. Maybe not. And her ears look kind of pointy. And, and she has a flower in her hair and a crown. You notice she has wings. I wonder what... Hmm. Now, looking at page 167, oh, that kind of looks like the, the blanket or the picture the older woman had. But I look at all the women down there or all the ladies. I'm pretty sure they're ladies. You see that? They all have wings. They also look like, what are they, what are they doing? Kind of looks like they're making something. Turn the page, 168. I told you this is a long story. It looks like somebody is using needle and, and, and there's, I see, oh, I see a fairy in there and I see a pond with fish. What else do you see in there? I see those green little pads that I think frogs like to jump on. Can you turn to your learning coach? and see what they are. Now looking at page 169, I see somebody looks like they're putting feet in very nice boots. And it looks to be the woman from the beginning. She's laying there and it looks like she has that blanket and a young man there. Turning the page, page 170. Oh, the man looks happy and so does the older woman. And look, she's holding that, what we think is a blanket again. And look at the pictures, look at the house and, and, and the trees and the animals and the water. Oh, I'm so excited, even though this is going to be a long story. Okay, turn the page. Oh, page 172. Now look, there's some men that, that don't look very happy. And I know they're men because they have mustachios. But if you look... There is, I, I see a woman kind of in the crease, and there looks to be um, two people there with children coming up to them, and they're all smiling, and I see water, and I see the fish pond, I see a house and trees and mountains. Oh, this is so pretty. I wish I had that blanket. Guess what? Now we're ready to read. If you need to pause this, go ahead, because it's a lot of pages. And I'm going to go back all the way to page 148. So if this is a good time to stop the video, go ahead, and you'll catch up and watch it in a little bit. Okay, for those of you that are with me, page 148. You look at the pictures, I'm going to go ahead and read. Long time ago in China, 
in a wide green valley surrounded by mountains lived an old woman who wove the most wonderful brocades the world had ever seen. Now we know what a brocade is. On pieces of smooth silk, she wove threads of gold, silver, and other colors into pictures that seemed to come to life. When she wove a tiger, it seemed to leap out from the cloth. When she wove a flower, it seemed to bloom in the sunshine. And when she wove a crane, it looked so real and so alive that it seemed ready to fly away. Mm, I already have some ideas of the story, but let me age. Each week, the old woman sold her brocades in the village, and with the money she received, she bought food for her three sons, as well as needles and silken thread for her weavings. Then one day, as she walked through the village, she saw a painting in a merchant's shop. What do you think a merchant is? The painting showed a tall castle, surrounded by gardens full of flowers and vegetables, with a shining river flowing nearby. Oh, I love the description. What kind of river? A shining river. Second paragraph. Never, even in my dreams, have I seen a place so beautiful, she sighed. And instead of buying food and needles and silken thread, she gave the merchant all but a few of her pennies to buy the painting. When she returned home, Two of her sons were already sitting at the table, each with a small pile of twigs at his feet. The old, old woman unrolled the painting on the table before them and said, Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could live in this castle? Mother, cried the oldest son, how foolish of you to buy such a thing. We will never live in so grand a place as that. What about our rice? whined the second son. We will have to cut more wood to buy food, and my hands are sore, sore already. Boy, it makes me think of some other stories. God. Turn the page. Just then, the door opened, and the youngest son entered, carrying on his back a satchel, bulging with wood, a bag. When he saw the painting, he cried, How beautiful! Then he noticed his mother's sorrowful face sad ah me he said gently why do you look so sad oh my son she sighed i want so much to live in a place like that so beautiful and peaceful the youngest son thought for a moment and said why don't you weave a copy of it while you weave you will feel like you live there and your weavings look so real that when you are finished we will feel like we live there too what a great idea the old woman clapped her hands in delight, gathered her most beautiful thread, sat down in front of her loom. This totally reminds me of The Water of Life, those of you that read it, because remember the third son was the one that acted a little differently than his two older brothers. Connections. Okay, page 153. Day after day, week after week, month after month, the old woman did nothing but weave a copy of the beautiful painting. She rarely ate and rarely slept. When the smoke from the lamp burned her eyes, her tears dropped onto the threads. But she did not and stop. She did not stop. Instead, she wove the tears into the threads of the shining river and the sparkling fish pond. And at the end of the second year, when drops of blood dripped from her cracked fingers onto the threads, she still did not stop, but wove them into scarlet, flower petals in the glow of the setting sun. Look at that picture. What color do you think scarlet is? Turn the page. At last, at the end of the third year, she finished her weaving. The castle walls glowed and the flowers seemed to bloom in the sunshine. When she spread out the cloth before her sons, all three of them stood still and admired. While they gazed, a playful breeze swept into the room and tickled the edges of the brocade. Then a puff of wind pushed between them, lifted up the wonderful brocade, and carried it out the window. Stop, stop, cried the sons to the invisible thief, who was the thief. They chased the brocade across the valley, but the wind always held it just out of their reach. At last, with one great gust, it blew the brocade over the mountains and disappeared. 
Have you ever had something blow out of your hands that you couldn't get? No, I can't remember. Page 156. When the young men went back into the cottage, they found their mother, mother lying on the doorstep. As they gently carried her inside to her bed, she whispered, Oh, my sons, you must bring me back my wonderful brocade. I've put my life into it. My heart will break, and I fear I will die if it is not returned. The oldest son boasted, it means he's bragging. I am the only one who can bring the brocade back to you, Ami. Ah, me. My brothers are too young for such an important task, but do not fear. I will have your brocade back to you by the morning. What do you think Ami ah, me might mean? They're calling her their mother. Maybe that is Chinese for Ami. Ah, hmm. I'm Chinese for mother. I'm so excited about this story. Then he strode out the door and climbed the mountains without stopping until he reached the narrow pass that led to the lands to the east. There he noticed to one side a little stone hut and a wrinkled old man sitting on the doorstep. Good afternoon, croaked the old man. Where are you going on such a fine day? I'm going to find my mother's brocade, which the wind has stolen away. Ah, said the old man. The wind serves the fairies of the Sun Palace. You will find your mother's weaving there, but it will not be easy. To reach the Sun Palace, you will have to pass through the Valley of Fire and the Sea of Ice. If you cry out even once in the Valley of Fire, you will be turned into a pile of ash. And if you so much as shiver as you pass through the Sea of Ice, you will be turned to ice forever. The oldest son teeth chattered and his face paled. He was proud, but he was not brave. The old man shook his head and said, there is another way. He held out a small box full of coins. Take this, he said, and do as you will. The old son, oldest son snatched the box out of the old man's hands and without a word of thanks, ran away down the mountain. He was too ashamed to go home, so he went to live in the city. When the oldest son did not return, the second son said, I suppose now I must go and try and find your wonderful brocade on me. With so much groaning and moaning, he climbed into the mountains, the narrow pass, and like his brother, he met the wrinkled old man at the little stone hut. And like his brother, he chose the box of gold and ran away to live in the city. Okay, so if he chose the box of gold, what did that mean? Is he brave? Or is he not brave? What do you infer? What do you think? Tell your learning coach. Why did he choose the box of gold? Okay. First real paragraph on page 159. As the weeks pass, the old woman grew weaker. At last, the youngest son said, Ah, me, please let me go to find your wonderful brocade. Our neighbors will care for you while I am gone. The oldest woman nodded weakly. And the youngest son set off at once, east through the mountains towards the rising sun. When he reached the little stone hut by the narrow mountain pass, the old man said, Good afternoon, my friend. Where are you going on such a fine day? I'm going to find my mother's brocade, which the wind has stolen. The wind serves the fairies of the sun palace. You will find your mother's weaving there. Oh, thank you, cried the youngest son. I will go there at once. Can you already start predicting what is going to happen? I bet you can because you are fabulous first graders. Go ahead and turn the page. But wait, my bold young friend, said the old man. To reach the sun palace, you will have to pass through the valley of fire and the sea of ice. If you cry out even once in the valley of fire, you will be turned into a pile of ash. If you so much shiver as you pass through the sea of ice, you will be turned to ice forever. The youngest man thought for a moment and said, Then for my mother's sake, I must not cry out, and I must not shiver. He did something different than his brothers did, didn't he? There is another way, croaked the old man, and he held out another small box filled with gold coins. Take this and do as you will. Thank you, replied the youngest son, but gold will not heal my mother's heart. She needs her brocade, and I am the only one left. Who can bring it to her? The old man smiled. 
I will lend you my horse, he said. If you do not cry out and you do not shiver, he will carry you safely to the Sun Palace. That was page, page 162. Then he took two stone teeth out of his pocket and put them into the mouth of a stone horse that stood beside the hut. The horse shook, stretched, and trotted to the youngest son's side. Then the young man leaped onto the stone horse's back and galloped through the narrow pass. Now remember, this is fiction. This could not happen. This is fantasy. All right, a horse cannot be turned from stone into a real live horse. The purpose of this story is for entertainment and to share a lesson. Okay, second paragraph. The stone horse raced down the mountain and into the valley of fire. Flames rose all around the young man. They snapped at his face and his clothes, but he remembered his mother working at her loom, and for her sake, he did not. Look at the picture, you know where he's going next. After they crossed the Valley of Fire, the young man hardly had time to take a breath before the stone horse plunged into the sea of ice. But when the waves crashed over him, he remembered his mother's tears, and for her sake, he did not shiver. At last, the greatest of the freezing waves rose up before them. The youngest son closed his eyes, crouched close to the horse's strong stone neck, and held on tight as they burst through the wall of fire. When the young man looked up again, the bronze towers of the Sun Palace stood before him. He jumped down from the stone horse and ran into the castle, searching for his mother's wonderful brocade. Oh, this looks fun. Pretty page. As he was searching, he turned a corner and found himself in a beautiful room where twelve lovely fairies sat weaving at twelve looms. Each fairy was weaving a copy of his mother's wonderful brocade, which hung from the center of the ceiling. But when the fairies saw the youngest son, their songs and laughter stopped, and they looked at him with great eyes. Please, he said, do not be afraid. I've come for my mother's brocade. I fear she will die if I do not return it to her quickly. The loveliest of the fairies stepped forward and replied, We do not wish to ha any harm to come to your mother. We only took the brocade because it was so wonderful that we wanted to make copies of it ourselves. Certainly you may have it back, but may we keep it one last night so that we might finish our weavings. Very polite. The youngest son agreed, and the loveliest fairy invited him to sit in a chair of carved jade and offered him delicious food to eat. As the sky grew dark, the fairies hung up a large pearl and worked by the light of its glow. Jade is a beautiful green stone used in a lot of Chinese jewelry and work, and other countries use it too. It's beautiful. Turn the page. The loveliest fairy was first to finish her weaving but it was not nearly as beautiful as the old woman's. She looked at the sleeping young man and at the weaving and thought, I wish that I too could live in such a beautiful place. Then quietly she took up her needle and silk thread and stitched a picture of herself sitting by the fish pond in the old woman's weaving. Then as the sun rose, the last of the fairies finished her work. Then the fairies rolled up the brocade and gave it back to the youngest son. He thanked them, sprang up on the horse's back, and galloped to the wrinkled old man's little stone hut in the mountains. Mia enjoys the story, too. Page 169. You are brave, my boy, he croaked, but now you must be swift. Your mother is dying. Put on these boots of mine, and they will hurry you home. The youngest man put on the boots, and in two steps he was standing at his front door. Ah, me, he shouted, running inside. Ah, me, I have it. I have your wonderful brocade. The woman's eyes opened. and With one hand, she reached out to touch her son's face. With the other, she took the brocade and held it to her heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us look at it in the sunlight, said the youngest son, and he gently helped his mother out of bed. Outside was a beautiful day. The birds were singing and the sun was shining. Under the clear blue sky, the old woman began to unroll the brocade. 
to her surprise, their surprise, as the brocade unrolled. It grew larger and larger. The flowers and trees the old woman had woven took root in the ground. The animals leaped up from their places in the cloth and frisked among the fields, and in a moment the tall castle stood where their thatched cottage had been, and the shining river flowed at their feet. They were e excuse me. <clears throat> Miss Fuzzy Pants needs to move. Okay, page 172. They were even more amazed when they saw the loveliest fairy sitting by the fish pond. And before long, as you might have guessed, the fairy and the youngest son were married. And together with the old woman, they lived happily in the castle by the shining river. One day, many years later, two beggars wandered past the castle garden. It was the two brothers. But they had spent all their gold. It had nothing left. They saw their mother and their brother with his wife and children walking and laughing together among the trees, too ashamed to call out to them. The brothers tiptoed away, never to return. Now, my fabulous first graders, think about the lesson, the moral of this story. There's many. Now, it might be hard not to take the money that the old man, the coins, had offered, but if we stay brave, and to our family and those that we love and love us, we will always prevail and persevere. Te amo, I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed that story. Hasta luego. Adios. If I can get my mouse back. Okay, technical difficulties. Oh, now, now I'm leaving you. Bye, love you.